My relationship to business was changing each time. My relationship to, yeah, like myself was changing. Like now I can clearly see and I'm grateful for all of that. I'm just like, oh, it's just such a funny like stop start journey that I do. We want certainty, right? Especially if we think about it in terms of like, oh, this could be a business. This is fun. It can support us. And I think whenever anything becomes a business or has a specific it's like mask under a specific purpose or intention. It can be louder than our own inner guidance, I think. Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves. I'm your host, Jessica Locke, a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Okay, I do have a question for you. Mm-hmm. How, I'm gonna interview you. <laughs> That's how oh. this is gonna work. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> but you know, I have a lot of questions. Do how do you think your readings have changed the most, like from the beginning to now? Ooh, you know how I love your questions. Always, they always like stir in something in me. It's like dig deep. <laughs> And I appreciate well, it. <laughs> I was going to say, a service answer is fine too. But I, I'm just like curious if you feel like even I, we were just talking about how you like brought in a bridge gate for the first time. But I wonder like, yeah, has your style changed or like your, what or even like preparation? Like what does it? Yes. Like I think at the beginning when I started doing readings, it was more kind of like, this is the information. Let me communicate the information. Yeah. Let me make sure I cover everything. And also feeling that I had to validate what I was sharing mm, because like it was, or? yes, prove, prove, like, you know, make sure you get everything. Is it useful to you? And also I think with each session, I realized, okay, it is a lot of information. Give people time and space which is also like giving me an idea to come up with like a different format, maybe break it down into a couple of sessions instead of just one. But that's more like the insights. The way that the sessions change is more like how I've changed in approaching Mm -hmm. this, Mm -hmm. seeing the person and also like, okay, let's talk about where you're at. What can we cover? And really listening to, okay, what do they want to dive into more? Some people are like just, lay it all on me like not super interactive Mm -hmm. and then others are more like oh right like really resonating and they want to kind of pin palm back and I think especially the latest one that I had was a split definition that's when I realized perhaps the ping ponging back helps them if I happen Mm. to bridge their gate I actually didn't check I never check with my readings for some reason some people do it I don't check yeah, oh, if I don't you know bridge why. it or not? Yeah, if I bridge it yeah. or what are the energies that come up? For some reason, I've never been curious. I just want to see what happens in the moment instead of making assumptions. Because otherwise, I think I'll get in my head. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so, yeah. Keep going, yeah. I think that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting. What was coming up for me when you were saying is like how there can actually be space for the other person in a different way now like you can actually dig into what they're saying or at least that's how I feel I'm like oh like even before if I'd ask like is there something specific you want to zone in on or whatever it was like we could kind of get there but now I feel like oh I can actually hold space for you in a different way because I'm not trying to hold space for all of the information at the same time yes yeah Yeah. yes I guess that's how it's changed for you, right? Because I know you've also, you've had this kind of like, I'm going to sit back. I don't want to do them anymore. Let's do it again or not. And then (laughs) do you want to talk a little bit? I know, which I love because you're kind of just honoring what you needed at the moment. And during some moments where like, I don't want to deal with any human design thing at all. Yes. Do you want to talk about this like (laughs) journey where you, you get pulled back in by your community? Yeah, I feel like <laughs> oh, this is, I'm like, oh gosh, this is such a theme in, in my personal life and work life of like, um, I think that my 
response when I felt that something needs to change in the past is was needing that like black or white. I'm either doing this thing or I'm not doing this thing. I'm either with this person or I'm not with this person. I'm either like, I just needed it to be very clear (laughs) cut. And that very much showed up in human design where it was like, okay, I'm either on or I'm off. Like I didn't have a lot of space to hold for like, something needs to change. Something needs to be different here, but like maybe it's not this dramatic change. And I feel like maybe from like that six line energy of like moving into the second phase I have a little bit more capacity for like (laughs) or at least I'm getting there I think for like okay like I'm not feeling this thing right now and like I'm gonna let it shift and I'm gonna let it like come in and come out whereas before it was like I either believe in human design or I don't like I needed it to be so clear cut and I think that was a lot of things like I feel like that was a stress response you know like I think when we're stressed that's usually what we do right try to like get like some sort of certainty that open undefined mind um so I think I was just doing that a lot and like now I'm like what whatever like I don't feel bad about the fact that that was my process but I can see how like it's so funny that I needed very black or white yes or no I'm either into human design or I'm not into human design (laughs) so anyways Oh yeah. Is the very human experience. Like we want certainty, right? Especially if we think about it in terms of like, oh, this could be a business. This is fun. It can support us. And I think whenever anything becomes a business or has a specific, it's like mask under specific purpose or intention, it can, I don't know if clouding, it can like be louder than our own inner guidance, I think. Totally. which I've totally done <laughs> yeah well. totally yeah I'm like yeah look at our world it's like every <laughs> everyone's inner guidance is masked under the yeah. desire or the need to make money I should say some some of us have the desire most of us just have the need I think yeah. um yeah totally and I I do like I I'm happy about the fact I'm happy about every time that the relationship changed. Like it was clear to me that my relationship to human design was changing each time. My relationship to business was changing each time. My relationship to, yeah, like myself was changing. Like now I can clearly see and I'm grateful for all of that. I'm just like, oh, it's just such a funny like (laughs) stop start journey that I do. (laughs) Um, Which, whatever. (laughs) Sorry. Um, Oh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. So I feel like one of the biggest things that has changed, this is something that I really want to talk to you about was like, I actually orient to human design as a tool now. I feel like I've been saying it. (laughs) I've been, I've been using that description and knowing that that's kind of like the way I want to orient towards it. But I'm like, wow, I actually do now. Because when I look back at those like first four years, I still felt like there was a right or a wrong way to make decisions. And I'm like, I don't think, I suspect it's not possible for me to actually relate to something as a tool, but then think that there's a right and a wrong way. Like then it's not really a tool, right? Like then it's a philosophy or a religion or a way of life. And I think that I had to accept much to my frustration that I was using human design as more of a like way of life or like a religion I I don't know how to like a like a rule it becomes like a rule book yeah 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 and I think once I finally accepted that that's what I was doing like this was probably I think this was like (laughs) anyone was following my Instagram when I was like <laughs> very um aggressively posting about human design and all of the things that at that period of time I think it was like whatever October November or something where I was like clearly working through something right, right. and I I was accepting like oh I have been using human design as a rule or a way of life or you know more of a philosophy And once I was able to accept it, it kind of like started falling away. Like I could feel it like, yeah, getting less and less intense. And now I'm like, oh, and and I think at that same time, when it came to readings, there was such an intensity behind it, obviously, because I was like, I have to get this right because I have to get life right. And I have to get, you know, like (laughs) everything was like so much more loaded and heavy, which I feel like I was absolutely bringing into my readings of like with sessions with people. Which didn't mean it wasn't useful for them either. 
Right. Because right. I feel, I wanted to know like so much of the process you've kind of right now, you just framed the process for so many people of us. Like mm-hmm. when we first learn about human design, it's so theoretical. Like everything is like the right, wrong. This is your strategy. This is how the energy moves. Like this is how we learn, but to yes. fully let it go deeper under the soil into our roots that takes time and then it filters through your own design and like I'm seeing I know you have like the gate of doubt (laughs) and it's like ruminating (laughs) over and over but it's like so powerful to see like to actually kind of witness that mutation of like coming out the other end of like okay I had to go through it I had to go through the intensity of like what is right or wrong even challenge others about it because you weren't just like trying to figure out yourself. You were having conversations like with me, with other like group chats. Yeah. Like, but what does this mean? Where does type come from? What is projector? What do you mean a projector is a lack of <laughs> sacral? You know, all those things even sparked. It's the mutative power of even moving that energy that you're trying to comprehend. Yeah. Thank, thanks for um, <laughs> making it sound like it was helpful. <laughs> but it was actually. Like, I feel yes, like I've thanks. learned so much because of that. <laughs> I I feel like you're so you're getting at something that I feel like probably is the biggest shift actually in my readings which is like I I'm so grateful for that time period it was annoying while I was in it but I'm so grateful for that time period because what it allowed me to do was to get to the energy underneath and I feel like now when I'm in a session okay I feel like so much of what is out there with human design is like the conclusion like it's like the now what right like if for example I I like can't wait to dive into fourth line stuff with you but about the fourth line right like so much of what you'll see out there is like your opportunities should come through your network your opportunities should come through your network like that is the that is actually the conclusion or like the recommendation but what's the energy underneath like why why should my opportunities come through my network but so much and I understand obviously why so much of what's out there now and even the way that like Ra's words have been reduced is just the like now what part of it but through that whole process of asking all those questions and needing to dig deeper and needing to get it quote unquote right I was able to get to the energy underneath for those things like what is fourth line energy why does it matter that my opportunities come through my network like why is that important and so I feel like now in my sessions I'm able to speak from a place and like open it up to them at a level that um how do I want to say this like that is highlighting the energy underneath rather than trying to say here's what you should do or here's what fourth lines should do or here's what projectors should be like it's like no here's the energy underneath what do you think about that like what does that mean to you like how, how like how could your life be different or how could we approach this situation differently if for example you're a fourth line and you really value trust or you really value um, a foundation and safety. Like, okay, so then what might that, you might, what might your life look like? Rather than just be, being like, oh, all I can deliver you is fourth lines should right. get their opportunities to their friends. Does that make Would sense? You, yes, because you touch on the point of how so much of the information and what pulls us in, it's also what pulls us in is the prescriptive part. Thank it's you, like, yes. Yes. This is how your aura, this is how the center works. So, you know, spend time around people, spend time alone, whatever it is. Yes. yes. But the underneath is like, how do we integrate it? Like, what is the purpose? Yes, this is the fourth line energy. Yes, we are opportunists. But what does that mean? Like, you know, yeah. we see opportunities in people. We also see that, but we're also exhausted <laughs> by too many like people time. Like, you know, we need both. But also, how do we find the balance? the balance that is unique for each person instead of the prescription that is given out there and I think through our own journey and through so many people like something about the last six months even a year has been so activating and Mm -hmm. deep and Mm -hmm. a lot of people have been going through like releasing old stories or like the death of many many old beliefs Mm -hmm. being challenged I could see a lot of people were being challenged and coming out with like this is no longer me like i you know, so many Instagram accounts I follow, human design or not, they're like, you know, I no longer vegan because of X, Y, Z, or I am vegan now because of X, whatever, doesn't matter which side I choose. It's just like kind of a rebirth Hmm. of their beliefs. And I think for us going through that and through the lens of human design, also realizing how do we go from knowing it from our head and then embodying, letting it become part of our cell and not think about it as much, because I don't think- We observe it through those lands, but we're not like 
24 seven, like, oh, is this the right thing to do? Is it compatible? Like, you know, all those things that are coming out that make us doubt ourselves yes. more yes. when the purpose of, of all of this is to bring you closer to yourself. But the more you know, sometimes the more questions come up. So the more we doubt, the more we fear. And then it can become like this thing we're kind of like afraid of doing wrong. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And and no, like for me, I have a billion thoughts. <laughs> I'm like, where am I going to go? Um, but I was going to say, <laughs> for me, the, the realization that I was scared of doing life wrong I was scared of doing myself wrong like that's actually what I was you know I I don't know if this is true but I suspect that like whatever our shit is for lack of a better term whatever our stuff is it's gonna come out in whatever like it's going like I feel like so much of my stuff with my childhood with with dating with relationships was coming out in my relationship to human design like that was my container that was my whatever so it's like it's gonna come out of us in whatever way and I feel like for me it was very much not wanting to do life wrong not wanting to do myself wrong and and that led to you know so many other like unconscious beliefs that I realized I had about what's correct and what's not but human design was just like my container my tool yeah my whatever (laughs) yeah that's such a profound realization because that's kind of what was underneath like motivation or not even motivation maybe perhaps it's one of the fears that were driving you to dive into it deeper for sure not necessarily a bad thing because fears help us move and it it always you know takes us somewhere but also like how profound to realize oh this was the undertone yes (laughs) under all of that how did you get to that point like (laughs) like, oh gosh (laughs) um I think I mean I just (laughs) everything sounds so you know hindsight it all sounds so like easy or reductive you know it's like well I just followed where I was pulled that does feel true and I'm like what an annoying answer if you are in that tension or confusion yeah, part yeah, yeah. like it isn't a very annoying thing to hear someone say that <laughs> or at least I was always like mm, thanks a lot <laughs> um, the only way through the only way out is through the only way out is through <laughs> yeah. okay I know how? <laughs> right 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 yeah yeah and you don't yeah and or at least I didn't I couldn't know like what I was going to get to or how that was going to help me like I just thought I was like again I just thought I was being annoying and being annoyed like I just <laughs> thought that's what was going on <laughs> Um, until I, there were many times speaking of that, like stop and start thing. There were also many times in that where I was like, okay, I'm just going to surrender to human design. I had to do that in, in all sorts of different relationships in my life, but like, okay, okay. I will dive in. Okay. I will read 500 effing Raru lectures if that's what I need to do. Like, okay, that's what I'll do. Like, I just... I, I think those points, those that process of surrendering and going in as deep as I wanted to, to completely rejecting and needing a whole bunch of space, like that in and out was the process for me. Yeah. To to realize. And then and then yeah, I don't yeah. I don't have a good answer other than like it just I allowed it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. kind of followed the energy out of all the other energies of doubt or whatever you just follow the the pull and I know this is something we come back to so often which is like you just have to do what's right for you and it sounds like you said productive but it's it really is because those inner guidance of like and we've shared a lot about like our businesses or just you know, what we're doing outside of human design and all that. And so much of my experience has been really surrendering to it. Mm -hmm. Like the way I feel like I've been just pulled on this human design journey for the first time in my life, I just surrender and watch. And then things were starting to fall into place, but it doesn't mean that the in-between when I'm like, I don't know where this is pulling me, wasn't uncomfortable. There were (laughs) times where there was like, it felt very static, almost like, oh, somebody booked a session. And then all of a sudden, crickets, 
am I doing something wrong? Am I not showing up properly? And then realizing, oh, the undertones of it, the mindset, the limiting beliefs that I had or the expectations that I had. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I shared with you how I expected, you know, I wanting human design to immediately make as much as I used to make in my corporate days, which what pressure am I adding to this? I'm doing this for fun. And it's like taking shape. How can I trust myself and it's been really just grounding it's like what do I need today <laughs> what do I feel a little bit anxious about yes. what am I trying to control that I cannot control okay how can I take care of myself and then eventually it's almost like when we hit whatever plateau and rarely lasts forever I don't think it ever yeah. does I don't want to make this into like a fact it doesn't last forever but it can last very long depending yeah. on <laughs> whatever cycle like forever. <laughs> yeah. yes depending yeah. on whatever cycles that we need to close or finish or still go through and then just you know going through the volatile human experience and also seeking for like certainty mm-hmm. at the same time is like a lot I don't yeah. know where I was going with this. <laughs> I don't know, but it's true. It is a lot. <laughs> I'm like, oh. I mean, what was coming up for me as you were talking was like, it's so funny because I'm like, <laughs> everything I say, I'm like, oh, it could be contradicted. But I, what was coming up was like, I don't pretend to know how the universe works anymore. Like, I don't pretend to know how life works. Like, I think that and, and, you know, five minutes from now, I'll be like, oh, I know exactly how life works. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's just the process of like, again, that like back and forth confusion versus clarity, like you just going through it. Um, but there, but there is just a lot more space. The space that can be created when you let go of some of those things, because I do feel like, again, like we've talked about this before having a formula having some sort of answer it's so nice it's so great like to be like oh you you need to clear your limiting beliefs and then money will come to you I'm like oh I love that (laughs) I I would love to take that as the the thing that's going to solve it and then you do it and then sometimes you make money and sometimes you don't you know and like I think that we can go our whole lives it's like that in that fixing mentality or like that certainty hoping that if we do x y and z we'll get whatever money etc and I think that is what I was doing with human design for a long time too is like and and we love that okay you you follow your strategy and authority and then you're gonna get rainbows and butterflies forever yeah (laughs) Yeah. and it's like yeah yeah so I don't know where I was going with that either but (laughs) well it actually sparked something in me because we and it's something that I was I emphasize a lot like strategy and authority can take you so far but that does not guarantee there's only like a hundred percent guarantee for whatever we're aiming for either it's business relationship following your strategy and authority does not mean that only great things will happen I mean does not mean it'll take away the pain (laughs) it's like when you say it out loud it's like it's pretty fucking ridiculous follow your strategy and authority like what like that it also, is- yeah it doesn't it sound like it will solve all your problems this is what you should do but okay shit will hit the fan yeah. things will not work things will be very scary at times you might get anxiety so how do we cope with those in between moments when you are following your strategy and authority and things are not working it doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. And I think that's the pressure that so many people come into human design or after learning about human design can get into feeling the pressure that like, I must be doing something wrong. That's why I'm stressed about my job. That's why this relationship is not working. That's why I keep losing whatever it is. And then it becomes this thing that we, you know, another container that we shrink ourselves into. Yeah, because I mean, lovingly, because it's bullshit. Like there is no, like, <laughs> yeah. like I love it, but there, there is... Th- the thing that we all want the like you will now have a perfect life it does not exist no how many religions how many practices how many cults how many whatever are we going to try to create to give us that thing that we all want you know it's like it doesn't okay from my (laughs) from my 30 almost 33 years of experience it doesn't there is nothing and so it's like that's why it's so quick to make it feel like we are wrong like again, that pattern of creating these systems and then we don't get the results or we don't get the 
belonging or we don't get the feedback, whatever it is that we want. And then we go, I'm wrong. Maybe strategy and authority is a little <laughs> flawed, you know? <laughs> maybe it's not just you. That's wrong. Well, like, right. Oh or maybe what you need right now is just to go for a walk and not strategy and authority, you know? Yes. Maybe that is not the ultimate, like your magic eighth ball. Right. It's not. Right. Right. Which is like, I feel like you and I are frequently coming back to like, or at least I am like the point isn't to be more your chart like the point is to like be more yourself and and enjoy life a little bit more and like feel more connected to life and each other and whatever that means for you like I don't know whatever your idea of a satisfying life is or successful life or (laughs) whatever we want to say like that's the point the point isn't to follow strategy authority it's like is that helpful is it a tool that's helpful for you and that's I feel like circling back to the beginning of this is like I actually see it as a tool now, (laughs) like not just as something that I need to be doing correctly or incorrectly. And that's why my life is turning out the way that it is. It's like, Mm. no, it actually genuinely is a tool (laughs) that I can bring in if it feels helpful and not if it doesn't feel helpful. And like, it's about me living in a way that feels good to me and not about following my strategy and authority. Yeah, that is so permission Which, granting. <laughs> again, again, is another one of those things like strategy and authority was a recommendation, like a conclusion that we drew from these other things. And so I, I think that's what's been really satisfying to me is like, if I can get to, which isn't always possible with human design or anything, I think, but if I can get to like, well, what's the energy underneath that would make someone say, okay, here's your strategy and authority or strategy and authority might be a good idea in general, then, then I can play with that a little bit more. Then I can be like, oh, here's the energy underneath. Um, this, you know, what, what having a sacral center defined, what that energy might mean. If I can get in touch with what that is, then I can play with like, oh, does responding to life feel exciting to me? Does listening to my body feel like a good recommendation for me? Like, yeah it's just a little bit more playful and spacious rather than yeah the, the philosophy of following your strategy <laughs> yeah the, yeah the new religion but definitely playfulness I think that's what we're both I think trying to like convey it's playfulness because I've noticed myself also just observing the people around me like I was back at my parents for like a month and a half and I was just observing them and their designs, their, I don't know if it's accurate. I have some time estimate <laughs> and I'm just yeah. like, Whoa, if this is actually your energy, I can see it playing out. Oh, I can see the tension. I can see why you cope this way. It doesn't mean that, you know, they don't make mistakes or like understanding those aspects helps me relate in a way. And that's something I enjoy doing, but it's just, it helps me see people in a completely different way. Yes. Oh, he's yes. not being stubborn be for the sake of it. He's not being difficult because nobody is trying to be difficult. Nobody wants mm-hmm. to like offend anyone or like start fights. There's always something underneath. Either it's inner child work, trauma, grief, whatever. But then through the lens of human design, it's like, oh, he's amplified a lot of energy. Perhaps that's why he doesn't know how to cope with it. Or, oh, her community channel is coming and she wants to help everyone and drag us along. <laughs> you know, those <laughs> kind of examples. It's like, whoa, it's it just fascinated me and it helped me kind of, not feel that I had to act on those energies that I saw just because I could see it and feel it in my body I didn't have to respond to it Mm -hmm. and it created some distance do you I feel like that is like the very um the helpful way that it can show up have you had times in your life where you're like I don't know how to phrase this but using it more in like an unhelpful or harmful way where you're kind of justifying or like do you know what I mean? Like giving excuses for something or like not address. You're like, oh, <laughs> suddenly I don't need to address this conflict because it's their community <laughs> channel or whatever, you know, whatever right. it is. Like, have you had both experiences? I think or seen the, both experiences? I've, I think I've seen it. I've seen it actually. Sometimes in like calls or people talking about it, I've seen people use the language. And for me, it just didn't feel right how like, oh, you know, for instance, they're a manifester, so they want to do things their way. So you, so I'm like, oh, yes, but also as a parent, if it's their manifestor child, whatever, like, yeah, there should be additional ways to help them soothe and cope and not just say, this is their design, let them do it. Like, I've noticed that I don't know how deep it is. It's just from like 
listening too far away and m- mm-hmm. my concern is like using that as an excuse for either like you know <laughs> shitty behavior or like offending people or just you know being a jerk to others because I'm here to do my own thing you know that we are still in community I think it's always a fine line yeah. and every case is so unique and different and like what does that person need what are they going through what are we going through what is our relationship to them <laughs> you know yeah. there's so many parts of the equation that is not just their design but it's I can see how tempting it is to be like oh yeah this person needs a lot of alone time so we don't hang out ever, or I don't know, (laughs) I'm trying to come up with an example. (laughs) Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I feel like um, it's making me want to know, like, what's coming up for the person, and and I've done this before, a billion times, where I've used human design to be like, okay, like, maybe I shouldn't be as mad about this, or like, maybe I, you know, my feelings shouldn't feel this way, like, I have definitely done that before, and I'm like, what, what did I want to be true? Like, why did that feel helpful for me? And I'm, I'm kind of just sitting that, with that question. So I don't have like real answers necessarily or like a, a definitive answer, but I'm like, I guess two things are coming up. One, I think it feels really good. And I like the idea of individuals being honored, or uni- uniqueness being honored. Like, I really like that concept. And so part of that is that like, this allows me to see someone as different from me and be okay with that and like honor mm-hmm. difference and honor uniqueness. I'm like, what, why else do I want to? I think, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, there's certainly, um, it can certainly be coming from an insecure place sometimes of like, well, I don't want to deal with this or I don't want to deal with that conflict. And so I'll, I'll reason my way out of it with human design. But I also think it can sometimes be coming from like a loving place. Like, Ooh, like I want the world where this exists to be true. (laughs) And so I'm, I'm like, "Mm, yeah, yeah. I guess I just think it can be both. I don't think it's always coming from like, an insecure or avoidant place maybe yes I think but certainly can be (laughs) layered agree like with everything there has been like friendship relationship whatever where I'm like oh I see this energy and like okay let them be let them do that so I've definitely done that and then other times I'm like we both hate confrontation but we probably need (laughs) something needs to be moving there so it's just like okay how can I prepare myself even though it's uncomfortable but it's necessary yeah. And, you know, not use it as an excuse to keep, you know, growing the elephant in the room. Yes. <laughs> That's an expression. Can you grow an elephant in the room? <laughs> that makes sense to me. <laughs> keep the elephant in the room. Maybe that yeah, makes more yeah. sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Uh, it, it reminds me of those, like, did you ever have those little, like, sponge um, things where you, like, put them in water and water then they and grow? They grow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, what it yeah. reminds me of. <laughs> I wonder if those still exist. <laughs> um not as cool as well whatever I was just about to sound like I was 65 I was gonna be like not as cool as an iPad but I don't know when I I become this person (laughs) I clearly crossed a threshold where I think I'm so removed from um childhood it's the six line energy (laughs) oh my gosh yeah um are there any like things that you have been learning about yourself lately or like that human design the language of human design has been helping you with lately or like something that you've been kind of exploring using human design Uh, I was just contemplating that yesterday because I felt moved to write to my newsletter and oh yeah I so maybe last year two years ago I I used to like try to write every week even when words weren't coming I felt that pressure you know you're a business you want to provide value you want to make sure you're always there but then towards somewhere in my experiment healing, I don't know what happened or what the time frame is. I just suddenly stopped. <laughs> I didn't want to write. I was like, it's fine. And I didn't feel guilty that I was paying for the newsletter service every month. Mm-hmm. And then learning about the expression gates in my throat. So I have an undefined throat. And then I have the hanging gate 12 and 33. Both of them okay. are also known as one of the gates of aloneness. It needs time apart. Oh, yeah. Okay. To reflect. Do we have we ever figured out where that came from? I was like, this. I think this actually was one of the questions that we had one time. Was like, why? Why, why? aloneness? Because, 
because it needed to retreat it needs space to one of the 12 yeah Yeah. to process the 12 it's kind of a it's about being in the mood it's part of the stream of i forgot the name i should know (laughs) emoting emoting i think so yeah i think it's not feeling yeah it's not feeling it's emoting so i think it's about like being in the mood and when i'm in the mood to write whoa i feel like Mm. i can write when i'm not in the mood i've always felt so not eloquent i feel like i can't Mm speak to different things that's why I always felt like oh ESL problem here too many languages but then I realized Mm -hmm. when people would tell me oh you're I really resonated with what you wrote you're so good with words I it it even I think conversations you're like you're so good I always feel like what but I'm not (laughs) good like if I try and it's interesting the voice of the 12 is I can try or not if I try nothing comes but when I'm not trying, when I feel like something wants to be expressed, like be a conversation or something, it just flows. Mm. But the most important part is knowing that I need time on my own to kind of reflect on whatever it is that I'm processing, whatever I'm taking in, whatever I'm simmering. And then the 33, because you, you're you listening, you're taking in people's stories, is mm-hmm. also known as the gate of retreat, I think. Yeah, um, I think you're right. <clears throat> yeah it's because you're taking the stories you're also trying to process so both of these that needs time alone and knowing when I have the mood so when I do express myself and when I allow myself to follow those rhythms I feel like the impact mm-hmm. I have is so much more stronger it's I don't try as hard <laughs> like mm-hmm. before I would like doing things showing up all the time and it's like crickets and now I've left my Instagram for like you know I've done one post once a month or something whenever it shows up and I feel like the impact of those the things that I put out is so much more stronger than when I'm trying yeah I I I feel that from you like I feel that from the content that you post now like I can tell there's a different I hate using the word frequency but it does feel like it's true a different frequency a different energy coming from it I think that's yeah I I whatever now I just like want to go into (laughs) your evolution because I do feel like it's changed so much like I feel like even what you let people in on now it's not like you're revealing a lot more about yourself but I feel like your content I feel so much connected to just you than I did in the past like I feel I mean I always felt connected to you because I was having real conversations with you but through your person (laughs) (laughs) through your Instagram like I just feel like I don't know there's like a relaxation in you being you on your Instagram now I don't know if that feels true to you but that's how it comes across to me but thank you it does I think I just feel like I've noticed sometimes I have an urge to create and that's like other elements Mm -hmm. of my design so I I follow when the urge comes and I let myself express when the expression wants to come without the pressure I've kind of just completely rewritten what a business model looks for me if I even yeah. have one <laughs> yeah. but because I was learning all those things a couple of years ago I really wanted to use those tools that sometimes are really useful and other times it's like you can't force expression and me trying to force to show up monthly daily whatever it is was watering that energy mm. down mm. and it wasn't serving me and maybe once in a while it's useful for someone but if I I'm the person who's creating that is not feeling completely aligned. And what is the point of what I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. And I I feel compelled to be like, I feel like you usually do this to me. So it's funny that I'm doing this now. (laughs) And the process so beautiful, you know, (laughs) so necessary. Like, I feel like you're always reminding me like, and you, you, we got here because of that. Like we, the tension was necessary because now we're here now and like not trying to glorify just the outcome or the wherever we're trying to quote unquote get to and I'm like yeah and that process was so great and now you've learned so much like I just yeah I oh. want to yeah thank you for that your own wisdom <laughs> 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 reflecting back at me no that is so true because I think the, I went through so many burnouts <laughs> obviously I had to learn some lessons from it and embody those lessons because there was a difference between knowing okay I did x y and z that's why I burn out and truly being able to embody and without feeling kind of like recalibrating the shame that I that would mm. feel or like the lack of ease when I had to rest now it's just like oh yeah it's my period week I'm not gonna do anything unless I feel pulled to Preach. like releasing that guilt has been so much inner work that yes, human design help validate why I was feeling all those things and why I need more energy. But then 
apart from that it's just basically living life and seeing yeah. like do I feel better when I don't push myself that way and seeing oh gosh results are possible when you're not pushing yourself which is something that we are constantly being bombarded if we look at Instagram or whatever successful coach mentor they're like do do these five steps make sure you do this and yeah. all of this is could be great but take it with a grain of salt where yes. you're at because even if you're a similar type to type with the same definition, where you're at or whatever cycle you're at in life could be completely different. You might be in a healing phase or you might be in this fully expressive, like, oh, time to see people and like, you know, do more stuff kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like so much of my life has been this dance between like structure and space and and when do you need more structure and when do you need more space and I feel like to bring it back to this whole idea of strategy and authority like for whatever reason I needed or wanted that structure and that was helpful for me like I I can I can kind of dog on it now and like be a little bit more whatever um flippant about it being silly and bullshit and all this stuff but it's like it was deeply helpful for me for a really long time. Like even the tension that it caused, I don't want to, <laughs> now I'm like, do we have to <laughs> do things? Do things have to be hard? I'm like noticing how much I'm glorifying, like, or, or right. could be glorifying tension or hard, but I also just think maybe that's part of life to some extent. Um, again, I don't know how the universe works. <laughs> I'm right. reminding myself, but I do, I think that like, hmm, for me, what I value is, is a feeling of growth and movement. Do I know if I'm getting anywhere now? Like, do I know if there's an end goal? I have no idea, but I think that I can see any of these things as like a strategy and authority, a rule as helpful as a facilitator of growth and um, movement. Now, that doesn't mean that I can't also recognize how it causes harm or mm. has how, or how I have felt pain in that process and how I've seen other people feel pain and and cause harm in that process like I think it's both and and that is like whatever this weird dance that we do as humans of like what harm is too much harm and what unhelpfulness is too much unhelpful you know like I feel like we're always doing that analysis um and unfortunately not agreeing on what that is oftentimes um but yeah I guess I just wanted to like honor that sometimes I have been in periods of needing more structure needing the rule needing the answer and that that has supported me also yeah oh yes you meant to that like I Thank you for bringing that up because the structure, I think we've talked about like signing up for B-School, marketing, all those things that were yes. super helpful. But then there, for me, there was also underlying things, mindset work, limiting beliefs, and also my energy that I did not take into consideration. So now I'm able to kind of pick from my toolbox because I've grown it in the past couple of years and I'll say this works now. And like the reason that I am at a place where, oh, things are slightly more automated it's because I learned how to set up those systems. I learned mm-hmm. how to, you know, put those things to help work for me. Was it nice all the time? No, I hated having to create like a email chain of things. Like, not that I hated it. It was just so much work. I just wanted to do the fun stuff. But like, I'm glad I set those up because those become part of my foundations of like, oh, I can go on vacation and then things are still working in the back end. That was yeah. necessary. And that was something I wanted to do. Some people can hire us for that. But I think sometimes it's very tempting whenever we're starting, whatever thing we're starting, we want to get to the end. Yeah. And we get all these tools to accelerate that end, whatever growth, healing, whatever end goal is that we forget that in between there is discomfort, there is some learning. Like there's always learning what we do. And we, a lot of times, like we, we judge it as good or bad, (laughs) you know, oh, if this is not the result that I was expecting this bad, maybe stop or like, oh, something's wrong with it. All those stories that come out, all the human experience that happens, that is, I guess, what we're trying to hold for ourselves and the people around Mm -hmm. us with the knowledge and using it as a tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> two thoughts <laughs> one that came to my head was like you you were saying at the beginning like I pull it I pull a tool and if it works for me like at the time and, and and I feel like there's a lot that we can learn about ourselves and each other when we get to like what does that mean for something to be working or work mm. for you? like what are you trying to get to or get working or whatever it is like I feel like that and then I also feel like um I don't know if this is true but from observation that six line energy I feel like so many of our journeys that I've seen are about learning about bypassing in some ways and like being present in the human experience because I feel like that six line energy that desire for perfection or that like pull towards perfection is so ripe for wanting to bypass <laughs> living <laughs> you know and it's like it can bring us into spirituality it can bring us into what whatever the thing is that or it can bring us into really disordered eating like whatever the um however perfection is manifesting for each of us I just mm. yeah I feel like there's so much wisdom and maybe this is true for all profile lines but um, I feel like I notice it a lot with six lines of like that experience of being kind of grounded back in life and and the day-to-day -day. like you said earlier like what do I need today like just like getting back in touch with this very earth grounded experience yeah 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 especially so if when... either of those spark anything <laughs> right. the two very different things <laughs> Well, you got me thinking with the six line energy and what happens if it's paired with other, you know, parts of mm. your design, especially if, you know, you have the perfectionist, you have this kind of like eagle rooftop view of things. There can also be like a pessimist <laughs> kind of like, oh, well, you know, things have been happening for like thousands of years, not going to work. And then, you know, that can come up the undertone of it. And then if you also have the 1858, is that like the collective of like seeing what's wrong with things? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. correction. And it's like, what can be fixed? Nothing can be fixed. And you know, it can add to it. And it's just, and then if you have a two profile as well, you just want to be on your own. I can just recognize the tension that it could bring, but also the yes. beauty of it, because through those shadow aspects, through that, even the pessimist energy, you're kind of like something in life might trigger you to kind of like, or like, knock on you to see like hey but there's also this little things yeah. that surprise us out of whatever mood we get enveloped in yes when when I asked you earlier about like what's been coming up for you in your design that that idea is what has been, been coming up for me in when I think about human design in my life is like how many things so I think this could be described by lots of things in human design, but definitely like the six line, if it's not perfect, kind of why do it type of thing, yeah. along with, I believe, is it 53? That's difficulty at the beginning. Oh, that... yes. 53, I... 52. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think... all the numbers are the same for me after a while. I'm pretty sure it's 50. <laughs> yeah, I think it's 53 because 52 is stillness. I know that because it's okay. the moon and I'm <laughs> deeply in touch. 53. Yeah. Yes. Um, I feel like you and I have talked so much about gate 52. Um, so yeah, the 53 difficulty at the beginning. And then the fourth line desire for like stability. And I can just see in my life so many of these energies showing up of like, either either starting and quitting something because it becomes no longer perfect not giving myself the um permission to like like even with human design a solid example like I felt again like if I couldn't get it all perfectly right or if a session didn't go perfectly like that and then I had to I had to desert it <laughs> like get, yeah burn yeah. it down <laughs> like <ended. laughs> um and so now I feel like so much more space. And then and then also around change. Like I just, we have talked a lot about this recently in our four, six club. <laughs> um, but like the idea of change with the combination of the fourth line energy and the six line energy, especially in this like second phase of life, like oh, yeah. embracing that change just feels really hard for me now and I never used to feel that way I was always like <clears throat> I always felt like a very adaptable flexible person and who you know who knows why I felt like I needed to be that way or like where that was coming from but yeah well I can I can <laughs> guess lots of reasons as to why <laughs> like yeah people get a lot of love right for being flexible and changeable and 
all those yeah. things. Um, easy, right? Quote unquote, the easy people that will just go with the flow. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, just being with that, those energies now, it post 30 and um, also, okay, this is bringing up for me something that, that I've been dancing dancing with a lot and that is when we need to move from or or I feel like I need to move from like I feel like there's this stage of validation right when you like learn about human design it's like oh you are the way that you are some people say because or maybe just you know it could just be you are the way that you are (laughs) it doesn't always have to be a because of it um but that that piece of validation so like again fourth lines sometimes can feel really inflexible we want the stability we want the safety we want etc that that fourth line energy thrives under safety and stability and then no being able to notice this is like another level I feel like of, or another hmm, experience of it of like knowing when that's helping you to feel really validated in that and then mm-hmm. when it's like okay and maybe that means I could push myself a little bit more or like yeah I, do you know what I'm trying to say it's like when when it becomes kind of too comfortable yeah but or not yeah. serving limiting us. maybe yeah yes when that foundation becomes limiting yes. the idea of the foundation becomes limiting yes thank you because I think that again like we talked about we're trying the, the so much of the Instagram community right now is just trying to get out information about human design and so you can see something like that that like fourth line um wants stability and safety and then there's like and there's a time when your foundation needs to change and I feel like I've been in that time (laughs) right now and I'm like shit (laughs) I don't (laughs) particularly enjoy this part of like the foundation needing to change and this foundation actually feeling really limiting and that like perhaps that like six line energy getting a little bit stronger of like we need to shift things again like we need to like mess things up a little bit so well, especially with the six line energy, the first 30 years, we might have been a little bit more resilient in the sense that we wanted to try things. We're like, okay, get back up. Maybe because we're younger, we have more energy <laughs> overall. But then after the, the first phase, the second phase, I really noticed how I just didn't have the FOMO as much. I just, I was like aloof was the perfect word. When I heard it, I was like, hmm. I do feel more detached. I don't know where that comes from. And then when I learned about the second phase and needing to heal because of all the first 30 years, it just, it was a natural, my energy was gravitating towards that because I think both of us, we, we happen to also like quit our careers or like leave the foundation we built in the first, what, 25, 27 years. And then yeah. like, fuck this, it's time for something different. And, you know, when I did that, I felt so excited. I can't imagine myself doing it right now. It will be daunting, but perhaps because I've you know, build a foundation that is more aligned to me for this phase. Who yeah. knows what's gonna happen in the next year, two, three years? I'm like, fuck human design. Be something completely different. Yeah, that's fine too. Yeah. I can't wait. I'm like, oh, what'll be next? <laughs> Terrifying, but sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah, that's like the part of it. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> okay. That, this, I'm going to like, I, I'm going to stick with the thread, but I also want to shift gears a little bit because I'm curious about your relationship to fear. And then I, I kind of want to bring in like the undefined versus defined spleen in it all because mine's undefined, yours is defined. And I'm wondering, knowing we both have the same profile, the four, we both share that four, six energy. Like, I wonder if our relationship to fear is different or more similar or yeah, like, well, I guess I'll just start. What's what's your relationship to fear, do you feel like? Now, maybe, maybe it's changed over time, but. It's definitely changed. Or risk, maybe that's a better word. I don't know. Mm. Both, maybe. <laughs> maybe they're the same thing. <laughs> I'm like, this is a very simple, easy question to answer. <laughs> yeah. Jess, you don't have a prescribed answer ready for me? I don't have it. Let me pull out my instructional book. Yeah. Um, I, I just know that from a very young age, I could feel a lot of the fear. I was afraid of a lot of 
things happening, like potential, mm-hmm. like, oh, somebody can get into accident. This could happen, like fear of someone dying. Like I felt so much of it and it, it would mm-hmm. kind of take over my body. I wouldn't be able to sleep in the night because I was thinking of all the things that could happen. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, I don't know if it was, like even when I turn off the light, I remember I would turn off the light on the first floor when I was living back home. I would run upstairs because was, I was so afraid that something will grab my leg. Even when I was like late in my teens, like 17, 18, 20, I would do that. And I know, like, I know nothing's going to grab me, but I had that fear, right? Yeah. And I don't know how or when it shifted where it wasn't like I was doing active work to engage with my fear where it just didn't feel like it was going to happen but in a more like risk like business life change kind of fear like with those decisions I think I would feel it but I've I've also done therapy before human design all of it so that really helped me hold space for the emotions and the fears and really look into what they're actually saying because a lot of times the fear is telling you don't do that you might die and then the undertone the underneath the limiting story mm-hmm. not limiting the story let's not call it limiting the story underneath based on past experience could be like if you do that nobody will love you if you do that then you will have no money and then you will be in the street and then you'll be ashamed to your parents and then who's gonna you know mm-hmm. all those stories mm-hmm. that we have I've just really I guess that also opens up space for like inner child work as a six line, Mm -hmm. every line, but for us as a six line, you know, coming back to that part of ourselves, it's helped me kind of look at fear in a way that I'm not no longer afraid of it. So that was a, I don't know if that touched on anything. Yeah, I was. <laughs> thank you for indulging. <laughs> I was not <laughs> expecting a perfect, yeah, a perfect answer. I am just genuinely curious because. Okay, a couple of things came to my mind was like anxiety versus fear to like mm-hmm. I wonder like when I was hearing you say those things about like someone grabbing your leg which I can very much relate to by the way <laughs> I still look under my bed sometimes <laughs> um, I'm like a lot of times I can tell that that is anxiety like it feels more mental mm-hmm. story based versus this feeling of fear in my body that definitely feels different and I feel like I've been much more attuned to it lately with making decisions that should not or or not should not maybe but like don't need to it's actually unhelpful (laughs) to spark like a death response like I could die in this you know like a, a frozen like a physical body frozen experience And I think, I know it's like far too reductive to just look at undefined versus defined spleen and think we could answer this. Like, you know, there's so much more life experience going into that. But I was curious if if there might be a pattern among undefined spleen folks that that like bodily fear response is maybe more present or stronger like it's just been something that I've been thinking about lately and and so that's that I'm realizing now that's where my question was coming from I didn't realize before but I'm like oh yeah this is where this is coming from um which maybe would help you respond to the question differently gosh I want to listen to your answer first of like how yeah like my relationship to it yeah um I think that it's much more obvious to me now how how much of a role fear plays in my life than I think it used to be like I I think that I was able to dress things up much more in the past like well they're just doing it the wrong way and that's why I'm reacting this way or they're you know like it was easier for me to yeah, I can't think of any other way to describe it other than like dress it up in other stuff. And now it feels like, wow, I'm scared. <laughs> it just feels like I can't really hide it anymore in the way that I used to be able to. Um, and so with that, I feel like my... Who knows if this is true, but it feels like my experience of fear is so much more intense. Mm 
but that could just be because I'm aware of it now in a way that I wasn't or I'm making space for it a way that I wasn't yeah. before but um yeah I'm just so like aware of feeling scared now of, of things and not even not again like not even like a mental story like it's most of the time I don't even have a mental story I'm just right. like I am physically scared <laughs> of something I don't know something do you notice an intuitive undertone or like intuition or something okay yeah so this uh, this is also what I've had to like do a dance with and human design has helped me like rethink intuition and fear and maybe my experience of it because I think that Hmm, maybe you're actually touching on what I was saying earlier is like I was able to dress it up in a different way maybe as something like intuition or like as something like it was feeling like um hmm. I think I didn't interrogate it as much as I do now maybe mm. is the thing is it's like before it would be like okay well I feel scared of this person they're scary obviously like that is what you know like that's what it is and and I think we can do that with quote-unquote like intuition we can be like ugh, ugh. and I, I feel hesitant to do this because I, it's like we're, depending on where you're at questioning yourself can be really helpful and then other times it can be really unhelpful right right, right. right. <laughs> in a place where you don't trust yourself at all and like just trust yourself don't please don't yeah. question like don't take what I'm doing right now yeah, right. I, I, I'm feeling like some sort of responsibility to um anyways <clears throat> so for me I think I've been in a place where I'm interrogating it a lot more of like is this situation actually unsafe is mm. this person unsafe is this whatever and I think in like traditional human design, I feel like Ra Aruhu would say something like, I feel like I've read this before of like people with undefined spleen. It's like, don't trust your fear or intuition because it is variable yeah. or changing. Yeah. I'm like that, again, that of course always feels a little bit like too reductionist for me, but I do mm -hmm. wonder if there's something to that of like, yeah, do you, do you question your intuition? Do you question yeah. your fears? <laughs> One thing that I was going to say is because being in a center that you amplify and take in, it's so much more stronger than someone who has a define all the time, right? Because that's kind of something they're used to. When you take it in, you're taking it from a lot of different people who might have a healthy relationship to fear intuition and who might not. That's and true. That's so true. even, you know, imagine in a pandemic, you're going to a supermarket, everybody's afraid. It's going to be like dialed up even so much more on top of your own fears in a way like it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be magnified do I have do I question my fears or how no. do you yeah okay keep going sorry yeah keep going. I so I think there's also like it helps like you mentioned to differentiate between the mental fear the emotional fear and the splenic survival fear because those mm -hmm. you know all of those gates have fear undertones the survival one, I don't think I've ever questioned it, perhaps because it's always been part of me. It's like my programming. This is like how mm -hmm. I function. There have been times where I, you know, ignore the splenic voice of like, oh, what is happening in the situation? Like mm -hmm. I should have, my body wanted to run, but my mind was trying to say, you're safe. This is not intense. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards I was like, oh, I, you know, I should have not known better. So I think in those moments, I, because of social norms, I thought it was okay. Mm -hmm. But then my body was like, get the fuck out. <laughs> and I didn't notice the disconnect of that until I was in a, you know, like the splenic voice doesn't repeat itself in a sense that it doesn't send you the same signal when the moment is gone. So right. when something similar happened again, and I, I mean, I don't mind sharing the story, which, you know, I was teaching yoga and it's at this place where this client apparently he's been confrontational to other yoga instructors because somebody got kicked out. I think there was some like <laughs> gym or like instructor's drama that I did not know. I was just dropped there in the middle of subbing for a class. And then he started talking about like, he wanted to kind of peacock, like show, oh, I also do yoga. I do Thai yoga massage. And I was like, Thai yoga massage. And as I was like guiding him through, he was like, what is Thai yoga massage? And then he was like, oh, I'll show you. And he immediately stood up. 
And at that moment, I was like, Ooh, what do I do? He's like, yeah, yeah, I just, you know, get into um, an up dog. And then he just like climbed behind me in a massage and then pulled my shoulders in the environment that if I was like completely aware of that, that would have been normal. That is, but because I asked and he showed me before I had time to process, I was like, what the hell? And then I left thinking, you know what? He taught me something. And in my mind, like I felt the fear, I felt the fear and that some boundaries had been crossed, but my mind was saying, Hey, he also taught you some karate moves. He taught you some things. Cause he was like, I, I also teach karate too. Like the, a national theme and I was like oh cool it's like he and then it wasn't until like I think next class where I asked the receptionist and people I'm like hey so about this guy they're like oh yeah be careful with him he's been he's intimidated I'm like why did you not tell me I'm like yeah. this is what happened and then he taught me some like taekwondo moves but I wasn't really interested and the the other receptionist guy was like so he forced those moves on you and you know it, he didn't grope me inappropriately, but it was still like a cross of boundaries. And when he mentioned that, it was like the fear that I had felt was finally acknowledged because I was trying to reason yeah. it in my mind. I was like, it's all fine. You're learning something. He didn't like grope you or anything, but I didn't realize how afraid, how like on alert I was. And yeah. then later on, I saw him when I was subbing a class and I wanted to run out of the room. And then that's when I realized, okay, body is speaking to me. Yeah. How can I listen? And then therapy, like, they helped me process it. And I realized mm-hmm. that was the moment that like my fear was like, go run, like this is not safe. But I didn't know how to react because of social norms. He was a client, like a big client for mm-hmm. the organization I was working for. And I was not prepared for that. Mm-hmm. But then because the moment repeated, I could feel the fear go like high alert. And then yeah. now I know how to cope with if this happens again and how, how to process that. Because sometimes I feel like my processing way was like, because my therapist asked, like, what happens if you see him? And I was like, never, I'll just run out the room. She's like, well, but what if you can't? <laughs> Obviously, she did not laugh. She was just like, well, what if you can't? Like, I don't know. Like, what do you mean? Like, I would just make sure I never cover a morning class. I was avoidance, like clearly uh-huh. avoidance. Uh-huh. But then she taught me, okay, how can you hold that? How can you know that you're on high alert, but also like ground yourself and protect yourself? So she taught me some tools and mm-hmm. that was very helpful you know, that's obviously an extreme case of like splenic fear of like pff, run. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know either, but I have, I'm like, I was very in that. <laughs> I was like, oh. um, I feel I, my mind was going to other places of like, oh, it's so frustrating to me that systemic way that we handle these things like every, how many people know about this guy. And then we're just like, okay, send for yourself, Jess. Like, you'll just have to avoid him. It's like, no, that's yeah. not. Um, anyways, that's where my brain, my brain went. But my brain also went to the pattern-based nature of a lot of the energy in the spleen. And I think specifically the 44, right? Isn't that specifically about like memory and pat like yeah, fear yes. of repeating the past. Yes. yes. But also you like being too, in tune. Right? right. With also but also being in tune with patterns and like not being able to to do like yeah to do if something is dangerous or not based on if we've experienced it before and like thinking about you seeing that person again and like it flaring up so yeah intensely yeah. how do you experience that gate in an undefined center like the fear of ex- I guess the patterns repeating itself yeah I don't I'm, my first answer was like I don't know but um I do know it comes up a lot like I feel like I talk to you a lot about I'm scared that I'm repeating a pattern. And um, I guess the way that I am orienting to it now is like, is it even truly possible to repeat a pattern (laughs) in like a very, you know what I mean? Like is, yeah, as human beings, is that even possible? I don't know. In in an exact sense, I think there can be things about situations that we repeat, absolutely. But um, yeah, I don't. I I think what was happening for me was more of that avoidant thing of like, well, I'd rather just avoid anything that feels like even even like human design sessions. Like, there's a time where I'm like, well, I'm just going to avoid it altogether because I've already done something like that. And so, and, and that wasn't good. And so I'm just going to like completely 
avoid it just for for not wanting to get caught back in a cycle yeah, yeah, yeah. so I think that I kind of for a long time took it very like an extreme way of like well I'll just avoid anything that feels similar <laughs> to anything you know because it could be a pattern like even yeah like thinking about dating people like well, this person said this thing that kind of reminds me of this other person. I'd be like, oh, oh no, <laughs> it's the, the same, same thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like feel, yeah, feeling like that intense, mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, they could be the exact same. It's like corny. They're so obviously not the exact same. <laughs> but that, yeah. So maybe this is just hypothesis. I don't know, but maybe in those undefined or open center, or I guess it'd be undefined in this case, undefined centers we can feel the extremes of them a little bit more like and bit, and almost right now as you were describing it, it made me feel like yeah that's where we kind of take in all the data right that's how we <laughs> this is our our radar I don't know if that's the right word mm-hmm. for it. yeah that's mm-hmm. where we take it in that's where you get like for me I would notice a fear but it's not it's not something that would pull me into like oh what is this as opposed to like, you know, my undefined solar plexus, my undefined sacral, like all these things pull me to explore and cultivate the wisdom there because that's Mm -hmm. why they call them wisdom centers, right? Because they're undefined. We're taking all of that in and we're kind of like sorting through it, processing it and then reflecting on it. And I feel perhaps with an undefined open center and with the spleen, you get a lot of fear hits and you're really kind of there to be not not be clear but to observe okay how is that serving me how is that adding to the story and for me it's more like okay this is safe for you this is not safe but it's not something I'm always contemplating as much because it doesn't shoot at me (laughs) yes I yes I think that's true and like yeah frequently how I will describe the experience of undefined and defined centers it's like it's actually can be kind of well (laughs) (laughs) It can be helpful in different ways because I feel like with our defined centers, it can be helpful to notice patterns that when they actually feel true. Like I feel like with my sacral and my throat and my identity center, like tuning into that a little bit more, it's just, it's like it takes more awareness to get there initially because you're comfortable or it just seems like you. But then once you do kind of break that threshold, you can kind of start to see patterns that can be really helpful in like expressing your energy. Yeah. And then on with the undefined or open centers, it's like, it feels so obvious in the beginning. You know, like it doesn't take a lot of awareness for me to like notice emotions or like <laughs> fear or whatever. I'm like, it's here, it's very present. And it actually at a certain point becomes kind of, unhelpful to try to find patterns there or like interrogate it in this way with a lot of depth it's like more like I just want to get comfortable with the Mm. um variability of it all or like the mm, highs and lows or intensities changing like just like knowing that that's a thing but not putting too much effort into like the why and the how and the what like because Yes. I, yeah, I feel like it can just end up leading to a lot of confusion, but maybe that's me saying that also with an open mind and undefined <laughs> head, so I don't know. Yes, yes to all of it. <laughs> to the, I think this podcast should be called End or But. <laughs> <laughs> just to leave space for all of it. <laughs> we, we'd we like to give you a take on everything so that you have no idea <laughs> by the time that you leave. <laughs> so you end up more confused and open. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we'd like to create the very tension we've been talking about this whole time which is this confusion yeah well but it also plays to like there's no absolutes ever 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 no matter how much somebody studied the system or anything because we're always so much of it it's also changing like society is changing how we are we're adapting to that so even your truth whatever your truth was yesterday could change in a few days from now yeah and I it's funny as we're talking like I find myself doing that thing again of like well what's what is the right and the wrong of the spleen of the spleen center you know and then I'm like what an unhelpful question like the, <laughs> the point is we just had a really rich conversation about fear and risk and like understanding our fear and risk why does it matter if it fits in the tool or not or like why you know it's like I I was doing that again where I was like I haven't felt this in a long time where I felt like oh I need to get and and part of that is because you know 
this other people could be listening to it and so <laughs> I'm thinking about responsibility yeah, in yeah. that lens in a way that I maybe have felt a little bit more freedom around lately but yeah I, I, it goes back to that whole thing of like helping versus sorry like is this helping me right now to think about how the defined versus undefined spleen shows up maybe not maybe but maybe not like you know like yeah sometimes these conversations can spark a lot of things that we're not actively processing because I know there's a lot of mm-hmm. so much of my insights come when I'm not trying when I'm not like sitting in front of a computer what is that insight what is the it, it comes when I'm just out with people it comes when I'm living life and it's something that I'm really learning to ground back to that if something is meant to be figured out or you know digested or processed by you by us it will things will align. Like, it yeah. sounds so kind of like, if it's meant to happen, it will, but I'm like, it's kind of like a mix of it, right? There is a will, there is intention, but it's also like, is there enough energy to do the thing we want to do? Because both of us, if we have our defined heads and minds, we could probably talk about this also for hours from a different angle. Remember 100%. how like at the beginning, I wanted to really structure this, like, okay, let's talk about the head first. Let's talk about the mind first and all this. And now it's kind of like, it was blocking our flow because clearly the conversation or right now the energy that wants to be moved is not specifically structured in that yeah. way. And yeah. learning to like, okay, how can we surrender to this and see what comes up? Yeah. Yes, like, yeah, the <laughs> the release of thinking we are giving answers has been helpful for us. I feel like time and time again, <laughs> I was like, perhaps we aren't providing answers, and that's perhaps not the goal. Like, and I think that it's it's interesting with that paired with that six line energy. I love I like love looking at the different energies coming together and just like what might come of that. And I feel like with that six line energy, thinking of it as sometimes it can be much more like a teacher role and we can think that that means something specific that you know like we've been taught through schooling or whatever it is that teachers have answers (laughs) and that's what it means to be a teacher um so then also it's been like an unlearning yeah yeah yeah. but also knowing that as a role model you're it's actually about embodying it and not telling it was like oh yeah it's walking the walk (laughs) easier said than done a hundred percent a hundred percent have you well actually I'm like I was about to take us on a whole other tangent but do you want to do you want to do you want to go can, on more I have tangents? time yeah we can go on a tangent and I can divide this into the next episode <laughs> if it becomes a thing we'll see what happens we're figuring yes. this out I'm curious what your current relationship to like community is and if you like do you feel do you feel like the people on Instagram that follow you does that feel like a community of yours do you feel like in touch with them in that way great question as always I feel like I'm in a pageant (laughs) (laughs) what do you how would you cultivate world peace (laughs) that's what I (laughs) know through my community (laughs) yeah Yeah. Yeah. through Instagram actually (laughs) I'm just genuinely curious I'm not I I rarely ever looking for an answer but I know I know and I'm I'm not trying to give you like a the perfect answer I'm trying to like organize my thoughts Mm because it always triggers Mm -hmm. like a domino effect of you can go anyway (laughs) yeah so the idea of community is something that I really had to like redefine for myself and mm-hmm. I, I've shared that within my community. It just feels <laughs> weird to call them like my community. You're my people. Yeah, it's yeah, more yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. it's more like then it's also not network. I don't know how to, I don't know. I haven't found a word like maybe community is the word. I don't know. <laughs> but or it, I mean, it, we could just say the people that follow you on Instagram. Like, I guess we follow. don't need to give it like a larger name, but a larger name. Well, so in my effort to redefine community, I always like I think I've shared that I felt like I never belonged to any place and you know because of many things moving around growing up or just like speaking a different language and just not understanding or just not connecting but I realized if I define my community in my terms it's basically the the, the auras the people that I feel seen and recognized by as a projector but also like a tighter group of friends and family that I know I can lean on so 
perhaps community isn't just defined by a specific group of people. It's more like different groups of people that I can lean on. One is to share, express, guide, and be supported by that. And then the other is, you know, do life with but friends, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and then mm -hmm. making sure that those, I see it more as the foundations. Those are part of my foundations that allow me to express myself yeah. versus the old beliefs that, oh, I don't belong to a community. I was like, am I part of this yoga community? Am I part of, and then it really, yeah, I am. doesn't mean I have to show up all the time. I know there is a group of people that I can always rely on in this different pocket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I like the way that you responded to that because it's like, it actually gets to the underneath rather than thinking we are all meaning the same thing by community. You're kind of like unpacking, well, what did community really mean for me? And I, I do feel like, um, I can't remember who, if someone in ART said this or I think, well, whatever, the whole idea of fourth lines and the, the like inner versus outer circle, which that sounds very rigid and it doesn't have to be very rigid, but I do, I, I kind of felt some of that like coming through with you. It's like, there's obviously this like inner group of people that I actually rely on also in like a more tangible way. And then there's kind of like outer, for lack of a better term, community where we are exchanging more like opportunities, opportunities to learn, opportunities to guide opportunities to yeah it's diff it's it's a different yeah. exchange yeah right and then you also touch on the the externalizing energy of the fourth because mm. like with my mm. friends and family I don't feel like I'm externalizing anything they're building my foundation mm. they're you know mm. I'm leaning on them but then when things do want to be expressed I do feel like there are people that I can share with yeah that will either receive recognize or even challenge me that's totally fine but they're there because I don't know, they enjoy what they're seeing and it just feels nice and it helps me work through my mindset of being like, nobody wants to listen to me or like my expression is not good enough. So it's, yeah. everything is so layered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what about you? How does like your community feel for you or how do you define it? Um, <laughs> I'm like, no, let me ask the question. <laughs> um, <laughs> um I think similarly to you, I've been like redefining what that means. I think I've also been redefining my community. Like it's been very narrow and insular for me because of all of these things that we've just been talking about, about like safety and feeling like, oh yeah, I don't ever remember if I finished this thought, but I was thinking about that energy tied with or at least this has been helping me understand it, tied with the 53 of like at the beginning, like it does actually feel very challenging for me to do the beginning part of meeting someone new or like coming into a new group, trying something yes. new. Like it just feels hard always for me. And that could be many different things, but I do think part of it is like um, just the safety thing. Just, I mean, the, it's lots of things. Um Anyways, so I think like in this process of rebuilding community, I have had to question like, does this person actually not feel right? Or am I trying to avoid rejection? Or like, am I trying, you know, like what's going on that, that it does feel so hard? Because I was, I was looking around, looking around, I was reflecting on my life for the last three or four years and I'm like wow I haven't really beyond ART maybe and some like projects I haven't really had a lot of new in my life at all like it's been very much the same people the same location the same house the same like I just created a real like comfortable safe environment and I can see how that was helpful for me in so many ways because I was like unpacking and processing a lot of stuff from childhood that I hadn't had the space to do so it was like it was a fantastic container for that <laughs> and now I'm now that I'm like oh I've certainly outgrown this foundation it is feeling limiting to me but I'm so scared of <laughs> bringing in the new you know and like being with that um so anyway I think I've, I'm like reorienting to that whole idea of the fourth line, um, everything needing to come through your network. Right, right. And and even though 
all the people actually <laughs> now that I think about it all the people that I'm like connecting with now, now through a business sense and a personal sense have technically come through my network it hasn't made it any less <laughs> scary <laughs> to you know like to actually build those relationships or try to like um yeah grow my community in some way like it hasn't been any easier <laughs> than it was before mm. yeah. two things I want to point out yeah. the first one I remember you shared how you've also kind of redefined the an online community versus in person yeah and felt the difference of like you know, how does in person feel versus online? Yes. Yeah. Do, then, do you want me to? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, say your, but yeah. the other one, oh, it was here, but I feel like it's slipping. <laughs> so maybe you go first and then I'll bring the second. It'll come back. back. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I also, I, I'm, I'm just feeling about to like, if anyone is listening and feels the same thing that we do often, where like, we like forget. And I'm like, I just want to like hold you and tell you that you're so smart and you're not stupid because I feel like it's so easy to feel like what is wrong with me or like why does my brain work or like it doesn't work in some way like I was just working with a client the other day and she was like she's just like obsessed with wanting to learn more about how to learn and like learn better and I'm just like oh I love you there's nothing wrong with you like our minds just whatever okay um that was a tangent but a needed one thank you <laughs> yeah no one's stupid okay um, I yeah online versus in person I think that I in hindsight this is how I'm making sense of it who knows but I feel like um the intimacy of in person I think I was avoiding for a long time even though I knew that it would feel so much better for me I was like, I don't, I don't think I was ready to be seen in that way. And I think for some people it'd be the opposite, right? Like it would feel much more vulnerable to be seen online. But for me, it felt like a distance and it was hard for me too, but just in different ways. But I, I feel like the distance really helped me like on an online setting, but I wasn't making any traction in the way that I wanted to like I didn't feel like I was actually building a community online I didn't feel like I was really connecting with people I felt like it was helping me express myself and so that was it was a really good outlet for that mm -hmm. but when it comes to like the in-person thing I actually feel connected to the people in a way that I have never felt online mm -hmm. um but I do think that I was like avoiding that for a while for me personally like I think that yeah it, I feel even like doing a workshop you know locally in Denver I was like whoa like these are real ass people it's <laughs> really like that like I I am being seen right now like I can't really escape this and they and they get every one of these moments too right where I'm like freezing up and I don't know what I'm saying and I lose my train of thought like all of that is just happening um and I think I was trying to protect myself from that for like a really long time and so if I feel much more currently right now in this moment, I feel very fulfilled in building a local community, like an in-person community and like doing workshops at places yeah. in Denver. But and also it does feel um, much more revealing to me. <laughs> right. Yeah. I wonder if it's also because you get to respond to it right away. Yeah. As an MG, you can see the reaction. There's questions as online. It, at the beginning, when I started posting, it felt so one-sided. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm like throwing spaghetti at the wall and people are coming or like liking the spaghetti or calling. You know, it yeah, seems such a silly, <laughs> such a silly dynamic. But I wonder if like just having something to respond, it's helpful. For me, it's an expression outlet. So I've never yeah, really yeah, yeah. expected anything. And oh, okay, it's coming back to me. The fourth line. So much of it is opportunities through the community and all of that, but also it doesn't happen intentionally. It's, it's never something that we force. So many parts of our design, we can never force it because if we put down, it's like, I want this community, bring it to me. Hey, maybe it works, but a lot of times it would be nothing. And it doesn't mean it's not the right thing. It doesn't mean that it's wrong. It's, it just happens unintentionally, just like you going to a cafe and being invited to share with human design like so much of that wasn't like I'm gonna make this into something totally to yeah totally and 
in fact, the opposite. All of the times that I've tried to make it into something, it hasn't happened. That's, I think that's an interesting reframe. Like what does community mean to someone with their sacral defined versus what does community mean to someone with their sacral undefined? Mm. And, and then I think we could obviously we could go so much deeper than that, like based on profile, based on, you know, lots of things, but I do think that's an interesting distinction between like what feels sad, what feels like a satisfying community to me mm. and what feels like a successful community to you. Like those are different things yeah. because your community is really providing for you materially yeah even if you're not having like a ton of um regular engagement yeah and like then, one-on-ones in a way yes yes whereas yeah when I think of community what satisfying community to me is it is much more engagement driven right and I wouldn't have the energy to be yeah. guiding that so in a way I like the balance of in person once in a while and then mm-hmm. online is such a comfortable thing I think especially as a projector and knowing that I don't have that energy mm-hmm. I like being able to show up guide a little bit and then go bye <laughs> let me just mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. rest for calibrate live life whatever it is and then you know and then when I do have sessions like one-on-one sessions they it's not that many that I feel overwhelmed I couldn't do like five a day and I know what my limits are and being able to kind of also rewire the business idea of like oh if you want to make x amount of money you have to take on that many clients and all that I'm like it's not supportive of me knowing what works for me so that the I guess the network the community the online foundation that I've grown feels very nourishing to me Mm -hmm. not saying that there's no challenges sometimes (laughs) yeah would you say actually then that the people that you're in session with feel more do they feel more like a community to you in a stereotypical sense of the word then like I, I I resonate with your distinction between Instagram being more of like a expression outlet that is absolutely how it feels to me is like well when I have the insights from living my life with my community then I go and share them there just because I enjoy that yeah, but yeah 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 I think definitely because I know that those are people I not I don't know a lot of them and I know Mm -hmm. that if I need something I'm not sure if that's something I can lean on I'm sure a lot of people would be like I don't know if I say something happened I post a go fund me something you know I'm just going at the extreme like will they show up for me I don't know maybe maybe they will share something but I don't expect that to because I don't feel like we built that intimate fourth line intimate let's not just call it for like deep connection versus people that have been in session that's brought products I feel like I've emailed with I felt so much more or anybody I've even dm'd with when the opportunity comes I feel like okay there is a connection there granted that like I don't always check my dms (laughs) or like (laughs) accept requests from people I'd rather like send me email first you know because otherwise it can get out of hand and I don't have energy (laughs) um yeah I feel like if I've had a touch point with you then you feel more yeah. real yeah 100 percent. yeah I just feel like I keep like picturing like the rings like, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah <laughs> I wonder I'm like who are those people like because there are lots of people on Instagram that feel like they have built a community and like I wonder what that's all about like what makes them feel that way or like how they f- yeah yeah what they mean by that wait a good thing maybe we can interview someone we'll bring in more guests and interview them (laughs) yeah we need need like um I feel like we need like an influencer from like bachelor the bachelor (laughs) brother like something but then I'm like oh Oh my gosh imagine break down all the candidate designs human designs that's a great idea (laughs) oh my gosh let's uh I wonder how many Man, things can get culty so fast. (laughs) I was just going to say, I wonder how many um, like things, groups or whatever have been created or brought together based on human design or using human design as like part of the process. Oh, so many, so many. Well, just the other day I was scrolling through Instagram. There was this compatibility app. Oh, (laughs) yes. 
it was just like, no, they've done it. Like, it was just a matter of time. Somebody was going to do it and try to, and that perhaps it comes from a good place. Yeah. But maybe we can talk a bit about the reason why it's like, you know, so many red flags. I think at the beginning, I definitely didn't understand. I'm like, what's wrong with that? But then I realized Mm -hmm. similar to sometimes when I didn't understand astrology or the astrology world, how they're like, oh yeah, that's a Capricorn. I would never talk to them. You know, those are extremes and probably memes, but you know, that just felt like, okay, differentiation, but also like discrimination is that the yeah, thing like yeah. you know, not giving people the opportunity to be like giving chances yeah yeah uh, yeah I, w- I really wanted to actually go in that app but you have to pay to see anything you do I, I did not click on it I just saw I was like what is this screenshot and then drop yeah. it in a room <laughs> I was I was reading the reviews and they have very very poor reviews and it's because they get your information first and then <gasps> And then you have to pay to access. And then you have to pay (gasps) to see anything. I know. And I was like, oh, so I'm I'm glad because I would have been very frustrated if I tried to go in. At least that's the way that it was when I looked at it. Um, Because I was curious, like, because who knows, they could go about it in a really expansive way. Like, I don't know. Like, maybe they aren't saying (laughs) you're bad for them or you're good for that. You know, who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of astrology apps now have gotten better at, like, just describing the relationship rather than deeming it good or bad yes the black and white I think people are learning maybe when we first learn something it's black or white and then we try we get into the shades of gray yes Yes. and then we go back to the black and white and then we go back (laughs) and like it's just that yeah constantly yeah well one one thing I did wanted to like maybe talk about a little it's like there are relationships that might not have electromagnetics or connection or anything, mm-hmm. but they might still work because mm-hmm. you're dealing with a person or conditioning or whatever. And I, that's why those compatibility apps can seem a little bit kind of like red flag because we don't want to, we don't want to take away the opportunity for either discern, discernment or whatever might come out from those relationships, like saying no before, even when your authority is saying yes, for instance. Yeah, I feel like it goes back to what we were talking about earlier of like, when is it helpful versus unhelpful yeah. to y- you quote unquote use human design? It's yeah. like, sometimes sometimes you use it to justify something that you already feel, but you feel like you have to like have a reason for it. So you're like, well, yeah. it's because of them being a Capricorn or whatever it is. <laughs> it's like, really, you just don't like the person? Right. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And, then, and then there's like the opposite of when we're like... Um, whatever this person kind of like challenged me in a way that I didn't that didn't feel good and now I decided they're a Capricorn and that's <laughs> right. why I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna be in relationship with them but yeah. Yeah, I, have you done many um connection, connection. Sessions? no I've done a few but I haven't talked about them a lot yeah. either it's just so sometimes I just update stuff in my website and I'm like okay I'll talk about them eventually <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes yeah. people book before I talk about it I'm like oh okay <laughs> I guess we're doing that I'm just seeing what where the invitations come <laughs> as I just <laughs> creatively update things <laughs> how much have you used it in your own relationship like are you looking oh. at <laughs> you're in our <laughs> sunstri <Arson's> very often <laughs> not well I I have shared things with you just kind of trying to understand but I don't look at it as much I realize I don't look at my own chart as much Mm -hmm. but sometimes if something comes up I might just look at his individual chart and trying to understand that energy yeah but it's been helpful to look at it when we first learn about it because then I'm like oh okay the reason sometimes we move through these like very deeply emotional conversations is because of this the channel of openness that we have together Yeah, yeah yeah I think that helps me understand but I I can I don't want to get it in, into my head too much that's why I don't mm-hmm. look at the transit all the time that's why I don't I just want to live and see what comes up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've been feeling much more that way I, I remember I was like really into the transits for a while and I'm like I look at it every once in a while and even when I look at it I'm like meh like yeah it's not yeah because I, yeah. I was I think that actually this most recent transit of the I believe it's the south and north node are creating the 2330 or 2343 is that what it is oh, yeah did. and and <laughs> yeah our, our mind just wrote yeah. and after being like wow this has been connected for a long time and is going to be defined for a long time I was like 
because I was, I was at first, you know, I was like, oh, the mental energy, which actually I have a, I have a new working theory (laughs) that it's like, it's for me, maybe at least, but maybe for lots of people too, it's like more of the transition points that feel really, because I remember in the beginning when the, when we went from undefined to defined mind and throughout, again, who knows, but I felt like I felt that really intensely, Mm -hmm. but then you just like anything, you get comfortable with the energy and suddenly it's not that big of a deal and even like something like mercury retrograde like I notice that I feel it more going in and coming out than I do the actual period so I think like anything it's the periods of change maybe that we notice more than the actual than the yeah it's almost like we're it's you're wearing a new shirt for the first Mm -hmm. time Mm -hmm. so it might be you're not yeah, used like to the tag it. is itchy and you're like yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then yeah. it just be yes I totally agree because sometimes because we do feel all of these energies right either yeah. through people and all that it's nothing new it's just that sometimes we might feel something that is more we might get insomnia <laughs> during certain time because yes. our mind is so active or we might be moody during certain times because of that and I yes. think just being aware or having the language and the awareness of it can help us take a step back and like create some distance instead of reacting to everything that's happening yes. like I used to yes. <laughs> I can't sleep something's wrong with me oh I'm lacking vitamins oh maybe <laughs> and then going through all that when it's like oh I'm just active well yeah. just watch something until I feel sleepy like when I really <laughs> surrender to those things it's like oh I'm suddenly like quote unquote healthier again I am not as yes. sick as much because I wasn't stuck in my mind thinking something's wrong with me yes the like added meta level of stress on top yes. of the stress of the yes <laughs> yeah I was I was just thinking to myself like all of the like journals that I've done trying to like track and again for, for a certain amount of time that structure that that extreme structure was really helpful I learned a lot and then at a certain point it's like okay like I don't need to try to trace back every mood I have to each food that I ate the day before I was like oh, or the wow. cycles of the moon like what do I exactly need <laughs> yes yes um shoot that room I was gonna think about oh I was thinking I think it's a similar thing with people that we're in relationship with, like whether we live with them or like we're with them a lot of the time. And I think you and I talked about this before months ago, but like you start to orient to who you are based on them. And and I think that that can be fascinating when looking at a a connection chart is like, what have, what has become kind of you because of this relationship? And then I think when we were actually talking about it, we were talking about how then like you go home to your parents or something you like go into another space and you're like whoa like suddenly you are feeling like a jolt of like this isn't me or like this energy isn't me but then it's like yeah you um we get we get comfortable with the energies around us and we start to identify with them in a different way so I feel like I'm like oh I probably am identifying some in some ways with like the 4323 energy right now like it's just part of partially become part of who I am for the for however long this transit is yeah yeah I mean it, it is part of your processing right now yeah yeah it's part of your processing and it's so fascinating especially understanding my undefined identity center and how mm. places and people and groups and environments can bring out different parts of me mm. and like different roles that I play like the roles that I play with my family and that could be you know but you obviously it's beyond human design. It's whatever role we had growing up, we always fall back into it with families and then the different roles we have with friends. I used to be my friend's therapist as a kid growing up and I'm like, whoa. And then also realizing, <laughs> you know, nobody was there for me because I always thought like, mm-hmm. you know, don't burden people. And, you know, those roles that I had to actively kind of stop stepping into, even thought it was all I knew. Yeah. And then learning to like, okay, how do I want to show up? And it wasn't, again, conscious. It wasn't like, I'm going to show up like this. It was more like very gradual. Everything is gradual. Yes. Yes. I have a um, silly like metaphor in my head of when you, like, you put a frog in water and then if you like slowly turn up the heat, like the frog will eventually die because it won't know to get out. But if you just put a frog in boiling water, it'll jump out immediately. But it's oh. like, if you like slowly turn it up, they get used to it at each temperature level and then eventually they end up dying when the water boils 
So <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> oh. I was like, <laughs> not that I would try. But whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For the record, I also have never tried. <laughs> I don't even know if it's fully true. It could be like a tail, but <laughs> I've heard that they they can freeze and be alive. Oh. oh. And then you can unfreeze them and they'll they'll go back again. I wow. have not tried science, I think, somewhere <laughs> along the way. Tell us if we're wrong. <laughs> Somebody fact check this. <laughs> yeah, fact check everything, please. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect within, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.